Hey, what's up? It's me, Phil, and today I'm uh, with uh, Chris Nani Minus, and we're going to make. Hello. Hmm. Uh, I suggest hit hello. Oh yeah, and we're going to make a tier list of how hard it is to corrupt video game systems based on the current uh, available technology. <laughs> so I have here a tier list maker template for the greatest uh, game uh, game consoles of all time. Well, end gauges aren't great. No. We can already toss that to the garbage. But, yeah. Yeah, but we can get through all of these uh, one by one and eventually have a general idea of how hard it is to uh, corrupt games and also maybe uh, send a picture to, uh, of that to uh, newcomers who are wondering uh, if uh, it's uh, simple to corrupt uh, the PS4. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah, good. All right, so yeah. first one is the game, the Game Boy, the original eight-bit Game Boy. Well, yeah, eight-bit eight-bit consoles are pretty much very easy to corrupt because uh, they're like they a lot of eight-bit consoles have like a complex instruction set, like x86, but uh, they like in like not a fixed width instruction set, but uh, they still but they're eight bits, so they're like really simple, and uh, you can just blast it and just to. Uh, breaks without like actually breaking. Yeah, and it's uh, it's it's included in Bizhawk, so there's rewind. And yeah, uh, well, basically you can just blast it with the Nightmare Engine. It gives good stuff. So yeah, it's gonna go in very easy. Next one is the GameCube, and I think the GameCube is also gonna take the Wii with it because that's essentially the same system twice. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I think it's. I think the GameCube is uh, like uh, like um, um, uh, in somewhere in between normal and easy because uh, they're three. They're like a lot more com. They're they're a lot more complex, but they're like the easiest like 3D consoles to look cor to corrupt since we already have like so much technology available for corrupting them. We have like lists to like uh, lists to like uh, knock the code and stuff and mess around with the code as well as mess around with like float values um, and. Uh, like uh, as uh, as opposed to like the uh, PS One, where like um, there are no floats, and uh, the only real code you can mess with are like branches, and uh, that usually crashes it. So you would put it in, in in normal because it's yeah yeah that yeah that's fair, and yeah we have so many lists that work on this, but then again it's not as simple as blasting like the Game Boy. It's gonna yeah. take a bit more work, and you and you still need to learn about the vector engine. So there's some prerequisites there. Yeah. Okay. The PS the PS2. PS2 um, is uh, it's fairly similar to the GameCube. Yeah. Um. It's yeah. Uh, it's a different architecture, MIPS. So, but we also have code uh, lists and uh, for MIPS, and also of course the uh, flow values are like a. Uh, well, for most uh, systems, they all use the same kind of flow values, except for x86, which also uses the same flow values, but also 80-bit flow, val flow, flow values in rare cases, because uh, uh, IBM is high, or no, Intel is high, um, uh, always high. <laughs> um, um, but uh, the IE uh, flow, uh, um, uh, what is it? Float, um, float. The something I, I, I triple specific e set, set 754 floating point value format. Yeah, yeah. The pretty much every system shares that format. Every system that has a floating point uh, unit, and the PS2 is no different. It just uh, instead of power PST, it uses MIPS, and of course we also have MIP, uh, code lists for MIPS, um, uh, and it, the corrupting is just basically the same. Uh, uh, the same kind of difficulty as the GameCube. I guess at this point, um, the PS2 and the GameCube are pretty much as hard as to grow up and see each other. However, you still have the, the goddamn visual glitches with GTA uh, San Andreas, where it keeps y flickering yeah. once in a while. And sometimes when I load, uh, even even on the like latest version uh, that I like made of like the uh, PCSX2 Vanguard thing, um, where I added more memory domains, like sometimes when you load a save state, uh, 
it'll just break the visuals and you have to restart PCX2. Hmm. So it's still prone to crashes. Yeah. But yeah, I guess in terms of how hard it is to corrupt, it's pretty much on par with the GameCube and the Wii. Yeah. So now we have the Sega Genesis, which is also known as the Mega Drive. It's a 16-bit console, and uh, it seems like they don't have the the CD player and the 32X in this list, so we're going to consider these other attachments. 3D Blast yeah. was uh, was a 32X game, right? Um, no, it was just uh, it was uh, just on Genesis. Okay, do do we have support for? Um, uh, yeah, the, yeah, there's 32X and CD support in BizHawk. All right. Well, I've never really used it, but since it's using the same architecture, I'd I'd assume it's fairly similar. I've corrupted three, uh, 32X games, well, just one, Virtue Racing, but I haven't corrupted like a, a Sega CD game though. Hmm. So where would you put it in the list? It's it's clearly harder than the Game Boy, but it's, yeah, it's, I'd say it's easy. Yeah, you can still blast it with the Nightmare Engine. It's it's gonna work. Yeah, but it's, it's also prone to crashes. Yeah, the PS3. We just added the prototype for uh, the PS3 in the latest. Our PS3. Yeah, yeah. Our PS3. It. I've played around a bit with Tokyo Jungle. I managed to get the the grass to glitch up, but you know, I I never got really good results. However, um, some people in the forum have shown that they can corrupt Minecraft on RPCS yeah. three. Yeah, I've I've corrupted using RPCS three a lot more, and like I've been doing this since like the Safe States feature like started development. Um, that the Safe States feature that we're bracing this uh, implementation on. Um and. Uh, it's pretty. Uh, it, it's uh, you can get lots of good results with it. Um, it uh, you can corrupt the full values like with the other 3D systems. Mm. Um, and uh, often you will get good results, and like the safe states work, and uh, uh, it just it's just like works uh, as well as like um, the GameCube and and stuff. But like there's one tiny thing. Um, um, the power, even though like you can corrupt a uh, code, like the SPU's code mm -hmm. that we use using my SPE lists, um, you can't corrupt the PPU code because although the uh, emulator uh, uses a JIT for emulating the SPU code, when not using an interpreter, it will use an uh, ahead of time recompiler for the PPU or the PowerPC uh, uh, part of the cell engine. So to get that to work, you would have to switch to interpreter and it would be uh, god slow. Yeah, oh. yeah. So like, uh, so uh, but like, uh, so like regarding code, we can only corrupt the SPU, but even then, uh, it still works. Okay. Uh, would you put it in hard? I don't know. Maybe maybe normal, but like, uh, but it's like it. Uh, it's not hard, but it's uh, not like uh, as easy as the GameCube. Hmm. But I do feel it doesn't yield. Uh, the same consistency of, of results uh, as these these three. Yeah. Um, I will have gotten lots of good results. Uh, just like um, uh, uh, here's also the, the, the thing with the PS3 thing. Um, uh, RPC S3 emulates the uh, virtual memory, but not the physical memory. So I had to like uh, split like the virtual memory into like a separate memory domains. Mm -hmm. And so you you uh here's the extra thing um you have to like often like uh find which memory domain is the best for like corrupting uh, uh for like corrupting um you uh with um uh, uh for the off domain uh, is obviously where the code and uh, the executable data are um uh so you can corrupt the SPU code from there but uh you can also corrupt floats there but uh. Um, uh, it won't like, uh, oh yeah, it does mess around with models, but it doesn't like make stretch to polygons or something. Well, um, let's say I'm a, let's say I'm a noob and I just, uh, I just installed RTC on launcher. I, I figured out how to get into dev mode and I install RPCS3. I, I, what, just with the tutorial, do you think that someone who hasn't done anything else will 
have the same ease of corrupting the PS3 as these three, or is it harder? Uh, I guess it would be harder. But not by much. Yeah. I'm, go I'm gonna put it in there, and if we have too much stuff in there, yeah, uh, up here, maybe it will we'll bring it back. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the Super Nintendo. Just about as easy as the Genesis. It really doesn't crash much anymore. Yeah. Yeah, just as easy as Genesis. Okay, what is this? I have no idea. Um, that looks like... I don't know. I'm gonna inspect it. The Turbo Express. Oh. Turbo... I don't know what that is. It's a portable Turbo Graphic 16. Oh. I don't even know if Bishawk supports that. I'm just gonna check it at the end here. We could make some research later. Yeah. This is uh, the Switch. I can just tell by the by the screen. It's the Switch, but the Tearless doesn't have the Joy Cons. That's amazing. So the Switch does not have anything available. Uh, well, actually, actually, um, we can corrupt the executables uh, with file stuff. We yeah. can't. In file stub, yeah, and like a, uh, you can like uh, as long as you decompress it, you can corrupt the executables. And if you like find the, like a uh, right a, uh, right um, offset offset for the data encode, you can corrupt mm. the data encode. And I've actually made lists for the uh, ARM64 architecture code. So, um, so so, but right now we don't have uh, a template in file stub. For yeah. It. Yeah, and, yeah, I probably should make that. And Yuzu is—is is Yuzu there yet? Yuzu is really there. It's it, it when a Switch game releases nowadays, the uh, Yuzu can already emulate it well. And uh, how the how does the progress compare to Ryu Jinx? Ryu Jinx is just uh, just as much as uh, good as Yuzu, I think. Like somehow, Switch emulation is much better than like the other contemporary consoles. Consoles, and it's okay, much better so than even even consoles from uh, previous generations. So it's the file stub workflow, but eventually one of these two emulators will have safe states and we'll be able to mod them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, very hard. Um. Yeah. Very hard. I, I didn't want to put uh, impossible at top. Because like yeah. impossible is, you know, nothing's impossible. But insane is probably going to be uh, all the things that you can't really do. Yeah. The, the Nintendo DS. Ah, oh, it's it's going to get even easier for this one because uh, I have uh, updated BizHawk, and now we have the version that has Mon DS inside of it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty much. Uh, I'd, I'd say it's just about as easy as the SNES. It's. But for the 3D games, they, they don't have floats because the DS doesn't have a floating point unit. Mm. But you, but we've made like fixed point. Uh, we've made lists for the fixed point values that the DS uses instead. So you can still corrupt um, 3D games like that. So okay, yeah, and uh, you can use a nightmare engine on the DS. It still yeah. works. Yeah, it's not as reliable as the other ones, but it still works. It just works. The 3DS, Citra. Yeah. I think it's as good as the the Wii. Yeah. That that's an easy one. Yeah. Xbox One. That's um... the Xbox. Oh. <laughs> no. Um. Is it jailbroken? No. Okay. That's. <laughs> <laughs> it's not jailbroken. You don't have uh, an emulator for it. Hmm. Good fucking luck. Um, Xbox 360, um, I'd say very hard because you can corrupt the executables like the Switch. Yeah. Um, and that's the only way you can really corrupt it. We could we could have a template for it in Fastub. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the original Xbox, so we haven't released the prototype for it. Xemu, yeah. But other yeah. than the fact that it. It ha it takes a while to create the save states. The workflow was pretty good. Yeah, Xemu is uh, based on QMU, uh, so it's so the save states are actually VM snapshots. Um, 
so I don't know how feasible, how, uh, uh, how, um, uh, whether or not we should actually, like, share snapshots, so that's the thing. But, uh, yeah, it works. Um, uh, uh, the thing is, though, with code, regarding codeless, Xbox uses x86, which, um, no way in hell are we gonna, like, uh, make, like, codeless for x86, because well, that doesn't we use did a have code. some things work. Some prototype things work, right? No, not really. Well, oh, no I, way. I, I These did... were for DOSBox. Well, I did, I did, actually, yeah, yeah, I did, uh, make, uh, like, a couple lists for, like, any, like, instructions that were fixed with, but those were, like, um, like, non-operated instructions. Hmm. Like, uh, floating, uh, so it was kind of, like, pointless. <laughs> okay. So, the, so we don't have... We don't have uh, instruction list for the Xbox. It's not. Um, we do have save states, and it's not public yet. But once it gets public, do you think it's going to be like as it's hard as the stubs, or maybe on on hard? Hard. Hard. Yeah, hard. Uh, this is some Atari console. The twenty six hundred. You're right. Um, I think it's very easy. Yeah. You can look at it easy. and it corrupts itself. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, the 7800. Yeah, it's the same thing, right? Is that the Jaguar I see? I think it is. We don't have support for that, right? Um, I don't know if it's on Bizhawk. I'll put it at the, at the end. We're, we can do some Googling at the end. Uh, I, yeah. I see the original Xbox 360. I'm just going to put it right next to the black one. Because it's the same yeah. console. Yeah. Uh, is this the ColecoVision? I, it looks like it. I don't know. It looks like something that's in Bizhawk. Uh, the yeah. NES... Uh, very easy? Very easy. Yeah, very easy. What is this? Is, it, is that a Saturn? Sega, yeah, Sega Saturn. It, it doesn't even say it. They didn't name their consoles properly. Okay, um, Saturn. I've... Uh, I've, I've, in, uh, it's in I've mentioned... The, yeah. Sorry. It doesn't use floating points. Yeah. It, um... Um, it doesn't use floating points, uh, so like like the PS One, it's kind of hard to corrupt. Um, and even then, uh, it's uh, it's um, code. Uh, the, as for code lists, um, the instruction set it uses is the architecture it uses is Super H, um, which um, is like a sixteen bit. So like thirty two bit like instructions are like easier to like uh, find and like uh, replace. Not so much for sixteen bit. Mm. Um, because uh, anything, because like the values could like uh, be like uh, it could like share values with like other like kinds of values. Okay, so no floating points, no no instructional lists yet. Um. Well, like um, you can sort of like a uh, sort of um, uh, like a do like a fil like kind of do a list filter of like the like a sixteen bit values for the code and mm. not them, but uh. Even then, um, like uh, they're just uh, the um, even then, the um, the code it which you would just do are like branches and stuff, which I, even then I think are would be kind of difficult because it would just cause a bunch of crashes. When you tried it, how did it react to the nightmare engine? Um, I don't know. I haven't really tried Nightmare Engine with Saturn. All, I, all I've done really was like try to do Super H4. Um, I mean, well, not Super H4. That's Dreamcast. Uh, uh, Dreamcast with Super H actually works. Um, Saturn with Super H. Um, I don't remember. I think I. I think back then I didn't use the like the method of like this filtering, so I didn't really get much results. Okay. Um, I would put it in in hard because it's yeah, in, it's hard. in this hog, but we don't know much about it. Yeah. Uh, that's a Game Gear. Game Gear is 8-bit? Yeah. Uh, Very easy. Yeah, it's 8-bit. I think it's a clone of the Master System, isn't it? Yeah. You can just put the Master System with it. Um, is that another Saturn? 
Mines? I think so. Yeah. Looks similar. I guess these are two Saturns. Or is this a, yeah. a 3DO? Could it be a 3DO? It really doesn't say it. Hmm. Uh, the PS, is that the Vita? Yeah, it's the Vita. Yeah, Vita. Um, is there an emulator for that? It only, yeah, but it, as far as I know, it only like, uh, it, the only three games are like, uh, perfectly playable. And, okay. uh, so it'd be kind of pointless to like, uh, corrupt, uh, uh, games on uh, an emulator where that can barely play, that can only play like Digimon. Hmm. Um, uh, you could like do the thing I did with the PS4, where you try to like, uh, yeah, like, do some black it's magic to like, you hook, can run, but, like, uh, you can run code. It's jailbroken. You could technically do it over. Yeah, but yeah, but like even then, uh, even then, uh, that's kind of a. I have even I haven't even tried that. Hmm. The Odyssey. Uh, that's not in. That's probably not in this hog. The Dreamcast. Yeah. So now we have a prototype for that. Yeah, how does it I'd compare say that's to uh, normal? Normal? Yeah, um, it's basically as easy as the GameCube, and you you can do the same kind of stuff. Um, uh, just with the code, I like I mentioned before, you have to like filter the the you have to do filter sixteen bit lists and not the like uh, not the the resulting me uh, virtual memory domain hmm. for like co uh, code corruptions. Uh, but like uh, you can also use float value corruptions, and also you can corrupt the uh, audio RAM for like stinky mini music corruptions because some Dreamcast games use mini music, like a uh, Shenmue Skies of Arcadia. And it does have support for floats natively. Yeah, it does. So yeah, it does compare to the GameCube. Uh, the Game and Watch, I don't think that's in this hog. Yeah, that's in that, I, I put that in, in insane because uh, there's not even an emulator for the Game and Watch. There's just simulators. Yeah. Uh, the Series X, right next to the Xbox One. <laughs> it's it's an Xbox it's it's an Xbox One, but uh, it's literally just an Xbox One with more power. And like like the Xbox One, there's no emulator or jailbreak. Mm. Uh, what the hell is this? That's brown, and I don't recognize it. The N64. Uh, kind well, of. Now it's easier because we ha we have Bizhawk Legacy, which allows us for Dynarek, yeah, for like code yep. corruption. And uh, it's one of those where you could run auto corrupt uh, with extended extended. Yeah. Um. And um, the thing is, though, like uh, like uh, even then, uh, like the problem isn't really as far as I know. With uh, isn't really like a uh, we have. There's no like real many more like problems with like corrupting N64. The uh, only problem is, uh, ironically, uh, like the emulation of N64. Like it was like N64 emulation, like 25, 25 years later, it's still like a uh, really difficult. Like to the point, like uh, mm. some games don't like don't run that well. Well, at least it's 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 pretty good now that we have uh, backwards yeah. compatibility. Would you put it next to the DS? Um, nor I'd put it in normal. Normal. Okay. Yeah. It's so it's still harder than those. Yeah. Um. What's this? I don't know what that is. Yeah. Uh, the Game Boy Advance. It's it's um, it's it's right there with the uh, this next DS. Yeah, the, the, it's pretty much the same. Like it's pretty much it's easy, but uh, like uh, one problem with the Game Boy Advance is that when if you make a crash, it'll make it'll rape your ears. It it likes to scream. Yeah, it's literally the same sound if you pull out the cartridge while it runs. Yeah, like that's that's exactly the cartridge. It's, mm. I think the thing the technically, I think a little technical fact with it, the thing with the uh, um, Game Boy Advance, why why it does that? I think um, when it crashes, it tries to read like the, it tries to read. Uh, I don't actually, I don't really know why. It, like. Uh, why, like, uh, like, uh, makes that noise? I think it's Maybe because it's... it uses the audio jack to output some kind of a memory dump in the form of audio. Yeah, yeah that's perhaps, always been yeah, my that theory. Is, that's that's what, kind of what I was thinking. I was thinking maybe it like reads uh reads data into the audio. Mm. Yeah, makes sense. 
Uh, the end gauge? Ah, oh, man. <laughs> I'm, it's not even gonna I... go on the list. Yeah. I've put the PS5 here. Now, the PS4. So you've managed to prove it's possible. Um, yeah, there's no emulator for the PS4. There's, but no, there is like... there's no functional emulator for the PS4. But yeah. there's like a, but there, well, like, you know, no functional emulator. Jorbertal is like uh, slowly uh, like get, getting progress, but the developer hasn't like made it public. Um, as far as I know, Orbital actually, like, a, but like, uh, as far as I know, there's no functional emulator for the PS4. There's like Spine, but it's like Linux only, and it's more of a compatibility layer. Um, but uh, jailbreak. The, you can jailbreak um, older PS4 consoles, ones that mm. are like on an older firmware, like five, like a 6.72 uh, or 7.55 or lower, but like the optimal version is 5.05. And uh, I like I found a thing where like if I jailbreak a PS4, I can like a uh, do like a uh, you have a, I do like a uh, put like a little cheat. Uh, there's like a cheat engine people made for the PS4 where you can like a uh, have it connect to your PC and like uh, your PC can like mess around with memory. You can mess around with me your PS4, your the application memory on your PS4 system. Um, uh, um, like uh, from your PC. So I like uh, I made uh, like a. Uh, 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 proof of concept RTCV stub that uh, but that's still that. insane. You, the amount of step that was required to even pull that off was stupid. So I, I'm gonna put <laughs> it in insane. Yeah, like nobody uh, it's can like do a, that. Yeah, like I think. Uh, yeah, it's like not impossible uh, uh, to like pull off on uh, like to pull off like a uh, like uh, easily. Uh, to pull off like uh, without screwing something up. Yeah, it's pretty mental. Okay, the PSP. Uh, so we just released the prototype for the PSP emulator. From uh, how much you've used it, and does it is it more on the side of hard or normal? I'd say it's normal. It's normal. Yeah. PS One. Hard. It's basically like the Saturn. It just it just uh, wants to it just wants to freeze up and yeah. we, we don't have code lists for it. No, we do have code lists. Uh, it uses MIPS like the N64 and PS2. Yeah, um, but it, when I it, try it, when it, I tried it, it would just crash it. Yeah, um, well, I guess when you're knopping like a well, the only code we can really knop with uh with like uh, the PS1 are like branches and uh, um if you're like knopping like a code that uh, code that tells the like uh, the CPU to jump to like a specific address, and it's like a, uh, I guess an important address. The CPU would just like would just like no, screw this, I'm I'm done. Hmm. Okay. The Turbo Graphics, uh, Bizhawk has it, right? Um, I don't know. Bizhawk Turbo Graphics. It's also called the PC Engine. I'm sure. I'm sure I've seen the PC Engine. In yeah, it does. It does have it. I'm gonna put it. Uh, I'm gonna Probably put it put with, it the, with the Super Nintendo because it's it's basically a Super Nintendo. Yeah, and it's, it's the same power as the console. Dinosaur, so it's I'm gonna put it uh, there. Okay. The Wii U. Um, Very hard. It's basically the same as like the Xbox yeah. 360 and Switch. You can only corrupt the executables. Yep. And uh, the the Atari Jaguar. Does it have it on Bizhawk? I don't know. Nope. But who would want? To, I like. Uh, who would even want to play a, like a Jaguar? And ironically, like uh, the only good game on there is Rayman, and there's better versions of Rayman. <laughs> oh man. Okay. And these at the bottom, these are like either meme consoles or I. I think I can put the Game and Watch on there. Yeah. <laughs> So Cause... yeah, there it is. Uh, that's the current state of uh, systems and how they corrupt. Yeah. So any newcomer will want to start with very easy to normal. And if yeah. you have if you have the courage to go through, there's a, there's hard, although uh, Xbox isn't released yet. And yeah. very hard, uh, usually you don't have safe states. And there are no safe states, but you can like corrupt the executables if you know how to like load the executables yeah, and stuff. Pretty limited. And insane at this point, I don't think it's like any of these is feasible. Like even Except though like, even though you managed to do it on the PS4 by using some kind of 
weird memory API that you found. Uh, for most people, it's basically impossible. Yeah, most people, it's basically impossible. I, I like, I did basically something that's like a just don't try this at home kind of thing. Pretty where much. like if you if anyway any if like the layman tried to do it, they'd probably break their PS4. Like because they probably try to they probably try to they uh, even though I've set it so that like it only like uh, so they, the, a stub only detects like the running a like, game application and like and like avoids certain like a uh, certain like um certain uh memory domain styles that would affect the uh consoles like health it is I'm so sure, risky I'm man it's i'm sure there'd still be point. i'm sure yeah i'm sure there's there's there'd still be people who like accidentally like just touch the wrong thing and just make their ps4 like explode or something all right so there you have it uh the tier list uh, of uh corrupted systems as uh, as of right now yeah. So, yeah, so if anyone needs a reference sheet to know how hard things are to corrupt, where to start, where to go, and uh, the greatest challenges that are still uh, to face for humanity, which is corrupting any of the Xbox consoles above the Xbox 360, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, fuck Mars, let's corrupt the Xbox One. Okay, yeah. well, uh, that's pretty cool, thanks Chris. Yeah, and, uh, no problem. So thanks for joining me on this. And uh, yeah. have a good day, everyone. See ya. Yeah. Have a good day.